Assalamu alaikum. Two of the most embarrassing um, incidents in the history of the Jews was their taking of the golden calf as a god besides Allah, starting to worship that golden calf, and then later on, in the time of Elijah, starting to worship Baal. These are some of the worst sins that the children of Israel ever committed. But of course, in the Talmud, the rabbis start making excuses for these sins, and in fact, they actually start blaming them on God, like it was actually God's fault, and uh, it wasn't really even Israel's fault. So, uh, Barakat 32a, first of all, they mention that Moses spoke impertinently, which kind of like means rudely towards God on high. Uh, as it is stated in the verse following, the sin of those who murmured against God in the desert, and Moses prayed to the Lord, and the fire subsided. And then they speak about, okay, where do we derive that he spoke uh, impertinently towards God? So the other rabbis have a different opinion. Okay, so let's skip that and let's get to what we want to get to, which is here in the blue. The sages of the school of Rabbi Yanai said that Moses said the following before the Holy One, blessed be he, to atone for Israel after the sin of the golden calf. Master of the universe, because of the gold and silver that you lavished upon Israel during the exodus from Egypt until they said enough, it was this wealth that caused Israel to make the golden calf. Establishing a general moral principle, the sages, the school of Rabbi Yanai said, a lion does not roar standing over a basket of straw from which he derives no pleasure, but he roars standing over a basket of meat as he only roars when satiated, which means like he's you know, he, he's, uh, he's hungry, something is causing him to, uh, you know, salivate over the food. Similarly, Rabbi Yoshaya said, This is comparable to a person who had a lean but large-limbed cow. At one point, he fed it lupins, uh, a choice food, and soon thereafter, the cow was kicking him. He said to the cow, Who caused you to begin kicking me if not the lupins I fed you? Here too, the sin was caused by an abundance of good. So just like... You know, if you try and tempt an animal and start giving him all this good food and this and that, tasty food and this and that, he's going to want, you know, he's going to start bothering you. And so it's really your fault is what they're saying for providing him with so much good. Similarly, it was God's fault that he provided Israel with so much gold and silver. What did he expect was going to happen? The Gemara offers another analogy. Rabbi Hiya Bar Abba said that Rabbi Yohanan said, This is comparable to a person who had a son. He bathed him and anointed him with oil, fed him and gave him drink, and hung a purse of money around his neck. Then he brought his son to the entrance of a brothel. What could the son do to avoid sinning? Right, so what is a brothel? It's it's a place where, you know, they're prostitutes. So it's like a prostitute house. So he he gets the son, he bathes him, he, he gives him so much, he gets him ready, he gives him so much money, and then he brings him to a prostitute house where there are all these naked women who are looking hot. Uh, what, what, what could the son do? What was his problem? You know, he's got hot women in front of him. He's He's got so much money and everything. What what did the what did the father expect was going to happen? This is what uh, uh, they're comparing the golden calf incident to. This is what it was like. God gave so much gold and silver. What did he think Israel was going to do? I mean, uh, uh, the blame is on the father here. Just like the really, it's God's fault that you got so much gold and silver. Just like here, it's kind of like the father's fault that what 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 were you doing bringing him to a prostitute house? That's what they're trying to say. And if you wish, say instead that it is, okay, so another opinion of where it's derived. So Rabbi Shmuel Ber Nahmani said that Rabbi Yonatan said, From where in the Torah is it derived that the Holy One, blessed be he, ultimately conceded to Moses that the reason for the sin of the golden calf was indeed the riches lavished upon Israel. Conceded means like he admitted that actually, you know what, Moses, you were right. Yeah, you know what, you convinced me. Before I was trying to destroy them, but you were actually you were right, turns out. This is how you speak about God. Here you can see that that is exactly what concede means, to admit that something is true or valid after first denying or resisting it. So God is conceding? Really? So what's the evidence they bring? As it is stated, and I gave them an abundance of silver and gold which they used for the ball. How is that any evidence? It's not. But that's what the rabbis say. The Gemara concludes, 
Happy is the student whose teacher concedes to him as the Lord conceded to Moses. What? Ha- happy is just like a teacher who the, the student's quite trying to convince him, you're wrong, you're wrong, and this is my proof, and this and that. He finally convinces the teacher, and the teacher admits, you know what, I was wrong. Just like that. God admitted to Moses, yeah, you know what, you were right. You were right all this time. This is how they speak about God. And so at the end of the day, here, uh, God is also conceding that it was my fault that um, uh, Israel started worshiping the calf. You know, it, uh, I'm just like someone, a father who gives so much money and uh, makes someone dress, his son dress so nicely and then brings him to a prostitute house. Uh, that That's what it was like. Of course, we understand that whatever happens, happens with the permission and the will of God, but that doesn't mean you start making excuses for your sins and, in fact, your idolatry, start blaming it on God and saying, wow, it's like you brought me to a prostitute house. Indeed, those who took the calf will obtain anger from the Lord and humiliation in this life or in the life of this world, and thus do we recompense the inventors. But those who commit misdeeds and then repent after them and believed, and then repented after them and believed, indeed your Lord thereafter is forgiving and merciful. Right? So uh, those who took the calf and repented, God forgave them. Right? But what is the essence of repentance? It's regret. And are we seeing regret on the part of these sages? Or are we seeing that they're making excuses and saying, it wasn't really even our fault, it was God's fault. You know, you're, you brought us to like a prostitute house. What did you expect? And then they do the same thing with Elijah and Baal. And on a similar note, Rabbi Elazar said that uh, Elijah spoke impertinently towards God on high as well in his prayer at Mount Carmel as it is stated, Answer me, Lord, answer me, that this people will know that you are the Lord God and you have turned their heart hearts backwards, claiming that God caused Israel to sin. On this topic, Rabbi Shmuel Bar Rabbi Yitzhak said, From where do we know that the Holy One, blessed be he, ultimately conceded to Elijah that he was correct? Conceded. As it is written in a future prophecy, in that day, says the Lord, I will assemble the lame and I will gather those who are abandoned and those with whom I have dealt in wickedness. God states that he caused Israel to act wickedly. It was God's fault. Baal was God's fault. And indeed, Ilyas was among the messengers. When he said to his people, will you not fear? Do you call upon Ba'al and leave the best of creators? Allah, Allah, your Lord and the Lord of your first forefathers. So they denied him, so indeed they will be brought, meaning for punishment. Except the chosen slaves of Allah. وَتَرَكْنَا عَلَيْهِ فِي الْآخَرِينَ And we left for him favorable mention among later generations. سَلَامٌ عَلَىٰ إِلْيَاسِينَ Peace be upon Ilyasin.